Hello everybody, this is the Cyber Bard, and I'm bringing to you today a brand new series, something a little different. This one's more on the literary side for those of you who are so inclined. Today, we are going to be looking at the lore of Skyrim. So we're going to start this series with books by Revan. And the first of this particular series is entitled beggar. Now I will preface this by saying that this may not be for everyone, but for those of you who like to take a pause from the action and read a good book, Skyrim offers a multitude of options for delving into these rich stories and histories. So let's begin with beggar. Eslaf Errol was the last of the litter of five born to the queen of the prosperous Nordic kingdom of Errolgard, Lafirkopa, and her husband, the king of Errolgard, Itluaf. During pregnancy, the queen had been more than twice as wide as she was tall. The act of delivery took three months and six days after it had begun. It is perhaps understandable that the Lafirkopa elected upon expelling Eslaf to frown, say, Good riddance, and die. Like many Nords, Itluaf did not care very much for his wife, and less for his children. His subjects were puzzled, therefore, when he announced that he would follow the ancient tradition of his people of Atmora, of following his beloved spouse to the grave. They, have not, they had not thought they were particularly in love, nor were they aware that such a tradition existed. Still, the simple people were grateful, for the little royal drama alleviated their boredom, which was and is a con common problem in the more obscure parts of northern Skyrim, particularly in wintertide. He gathered his household staff and his five fat, bawling little heirs in front of him and divided his estate. To his son, he nope, he gave his title, to his son Lernu, he gave his land. To his son Swoibud, he gave his fortune. To his daughter Lesifitra, he gave his army. Itluaf's advisors had suggested he keep the inheritance together for the good of the kingdom, but Itluaf did not particularly care for his advisors or the kingdom for that matter. Upon making his announcement, he drew his dagger across his throat. One of the nurses, who was rather shy, finally decided to speak as the king's life ebbed away. Your Highness, you forgot your fifth child, little Eslaf. Good Itluaf groaned. It is something hard to concentrate. It is somewhat hard to concentrate with blood gushing from one's throat, after all. The king tried in vain to think of something to bequeath, but there was nothing left. Finally, he sputtered irritably. Eslaf should have been taken, should have taken something then and died. That a babe but a few days old was expected to demand his rightful inheritance was arguably unfair, but so Eslaf Errol was given his birthright with his father's dying breath. He would have nothing but what he had taken. Since no one else would have him, the shy nurse, whose name was Druspa, took the baby home. It was a decrepit little shack, and over the years that followed it became more and more decrepit. Unable to find work, Druspa sold all of her furnishings to buy food for little Eslaf. By the time he was old enough to walk and talk, she had sold the walls and the roof as well, so they had nothing but a floor to call home. And if you've ever been to Skyrim, you can appreciate that that is scarcely sufficient. Druspa did not tell Eslaf the story of his birth, or that his brothers and sister were leading quite nice lives with their inheritances, for, as we have said, she was rather shy and found it difficult to broach the subject. She was so painfully shy, in fact, that whenever he asked any questions about where he came from, Druspa would run away. That was more or less her answer to everything, to flee. In order to communicate with her at all, Eslaf learned how to run almost as soon as he could walk. He couldn't keep up with his adopted mother, mother at first, but in time he learned to go toe-heel-toe-heel toe, heel 
if he anticipated a short but fast sprint, and heel toe, heel toe, if it seemed Druspa was headed for a long distance marathon flight. He never did get all of the answers he needed from her, but Eslav did learn how to run. The kingdom of Erlgard had, in the years that Eslav was growing, become quite a grim place. King Enop did not have a treasury, for Suibad had given that, had been given that. He did not have any property for income, for Lernu had been given that. He did not have an army to protect the people, for Lysifitra had been given that. Furthermore, as he was but a child, all decisions in the kingdom went through Enop's rather corrupt council. It had become a bureaucratic, exploitative land of high taxes, rampant crime, and regular incursions from neighboring kingdoms. Not a particular unusual situation for a kingdom of Tamriel, but an unpleasant one nonetheless. The time finally came when the tax collector arrived to Druzba's hovel, such as it was, to collect the only thing he could, the floor. Rather than protest, the poor shy maid ran away, and Eslaf never saw her again. Without a home or a mother, Eslaf did not know what to do. He had grown accustomed to the cold open air in Druzba's shack, but he was hungry. May I have a piece of meat? He asked the butcher down the street. I'm very hungry. The man had known the boy for years, often spoke to his wife about how sorry he felt for him, growing up in a home with no ceilings or walls. He smiled at Eslaf and said, Go away, or I'll hit you. Eslaf hurriedly left the butcher and went to a nearby tavern. The tavern keeper had been a former valet in the king's court and knew that the boy was by right a prince. Many times he had seen the poor ragged lad in the streets and sighed at the way fate had treated him. May I have something to eat? Eslav asked this tavern keeper. I'm very hungry. You're very lucky I don't cook you up and eat you, replied the tavern keeper. Eslav hurriedly left the tavern. For the rest of the day, the boy approached the good citizens of Erlgard, begging for food. One person had thrown something at him, but it turned out to be an inedible rock. As night fell, a raggedy man came up to Eslaf, and without saying a word, handed him a piece of fruit and a piece of dried meat. The lad took it, wide-eyed, and as he devoured it, he thanked the man very sweetly. If I see you begging on the streets tomorrow, the man growled, I'll kill you myself. There are only so many beggars we of the guild allow in any one town, and you make it one too many. You're ruining business. It was a good thing Eslav Errol knew how to run. He ran all night. Eslav Errol's story is continued in the book Thief. And so ends the first chapter in the tale of Eslav Errol. I hope you enjoyed it. You are hearing a piece of Skyrim history, the lore, the tales. If you enjoyed this, please leave me a thumbs up below, like, and subscribe to my channel. It would be sincerely appreciated. I will be bringing you next time the tale of Thief, the continuation of Eslaf Errol's story. If you would like to follow me on social media, please do so in the description of the video below. I thank you very much for stopping by, and until next story, this is the Cyberbard signing off.